Hi, my name's Keith Cooper, North Light Images, and in this video I'm going to have a look at this, the Pro 300 printer from Canon, and some aspects of paper choices for printing photos. Now I'm specifically looking at colour photos here, and uh, black and white is broadly similar but different enough that I've covered this elsewhere. Now I've got a detailed review of this printer and quite a few other videos I made a while ago when it first came out, but um, I've got the Pro 300 to have a look at again and I'm going to be doing a few more detailed tests on it. Now I did recently look at the best print quality settings to use and uh, that's interesting if you've got one of these and you print photos with a lot of fine detail in it. Uh, the short answer to it is uh, you print at the highest quality setting and you send whatever print resolution you've got to the printer driver and it gives you better results. If you're interested in the details, I say have a look. All the links are connected with the video. Um, I'm going to have a look at this picture here. Uh, this is a photograph of a building. I took uh, this photo for the architects. Um, actually happened to be whilst I was testing a lens as well, so it's uh, quite a useful photograph in numerous respects. But it's typical of one of my architectural or landscape photographs I might want to print. As I say, black and white is different, and I will come back to black and white again, but I have got some other materials on that. The papers I'm looking at, now remember I'm in the UK, so I'm limited what papers I can get. Um, similarly, papers that I might choose may not be available where you are. Have a look in the actual written review, it's got details of the papers. You will almost certainly find similar types of papers available. Now the important thing is for colour printing here is that I've got ICC colour profiles, printer profiles for all of these papers. Now, this one, um, now Pinnacle is a brand, it's a local company here in Leicester in the UK where I live. And uh, Paper Spectrum is the business, and this is a Silk Baraita 310 gram paper. Now, that's a Baraita, um, usually a term for a heavier paper, slightly dull, slightly shiny, shiny uh, finish. Typically, it's meant to feel like some of the darkroom papers you've got. This is it here I've actually got loaded. Um, I can see a sheen on the surface of it. We'll see what it looks like when it's printed. But why have I picked this one? Well, my other common papers to use would be, and this is a, another one, this is a 300 gram luster. This is very much like the standard Canon luster papers you might get, but it's heavyweight. So this is 300 gram, gram, it's not much thicker than the luster papers you've got, but it's got a nice solid feel to it. I use this as a standard paper for a lot of my commercial printing. What's the difference between this and the Baraita? This is a bright white finish. This is a white, but not quite so bright finish. Um, depends on you know, the quite subtle differences between papers. Uh, lastly, I've got one here. This is another one I tested when I did the original review. This is a Canson and it's a rag photographique. And this one is 310 grams. So the grams gives you an estimate of the thickness, but grams does not equate with thickness because it doesn't include the paper density. So you can have a 500 gram paper, which is very thin because it's very heavy paper. We can have um, a 500 gram, which is quite thick almost like card, um, just depends on the density of it. Now, this one here, this is a bright white smooth surface paper. Now this is an art paper. Um, I will admit I don't actually know what the term fine art means in terms of papers, it's purely marketing. But I've covered that elsewhere in looking at papers. So essentially I've got a choice between a rag paper with a smooth white finish, a brighter white paper, and a slightly less bright white paper. Now, it's a lot of it is just your taste, what you happen to like uh, in your images. Now, I might choose for some of my architectural images, a paper like the rag paper here. It has a nice finish, works very well for black and white, gives good tonal with it. The, uh, the printer, the Pro 300, because it's a pigment ink printer, does very good black and white, does very good colour as well. Um, so I really could print this image on any of these, but I've chosen this one because it's a thick paper. I want a print that feels good. 
It also happened to know reproducers, paper, uh, reproducers color very well. I've got profiles for it. And there's quite a lot of white in this image here and the strong blue sky. Now, I don't want the white to take on too brilliant white look. And with this paper, it might come out just a little cool looking. I want a slight bit of warmth to it. So I'm gonna pick this paper here because the paper is slightly warmer. Now, it really is a matter of taste, but go for the heavier papers, make sure you've got profiles and you won't go very far wrong. So anyway, here's the silk baryta that I'm going to use. So it's quite a thick paper. Um, here's my pinnacle luster. This is a good general purpose paper. Um, lust papers are my normal choice. As I said, this is 300 gram, and I prefer using this one because it's 300 gram. Now, this is quite a heavy box of paper. That's because the paper is dense, and it does make a, a difference when you're showing prints to people. Remember, the weight doesn't make that much difference when you've got your picture framed, say behind glass, or so however you choose to mount it. But if people actually handle prints, then a thick paper always works better. People un unconsciously associate a thick paper with an aspect of quality about it. And that bleeds through into your image and people, if you hand them a print on a thick paper, hand them a print on a thin paper, they will tend to think the thick paper is a better picture. Who knows, but it's, yeah, it's a worthwhile thing to make use of in your marketing if need be. Now, I've loaded this sheet of paper um, I profiled this and I produced the profile at the Pro Luster setting. So this is literally loaded into the printer here. Um, it's set for A3, which is the paper size, and it's set for Pro Luster as the, as the paper type. Now I do when I load paper in, I like to make sure I set it on the, here as well. I know some people say it's a lot of faff, I can't be bothered doing it. I do it because I'm changing papers all the time and it's like a little reminder to me, have I got this right? Um, it's a minimal effort to save wasting paper. And I have wasted paper before by just swapping things over and forgetting what I'm doing. It's very easy to do if you're doing several different types of paper. Now the image is opened up in Photoshop. Uh, there it is. Now I'm going to print it from the Canon print layout software. Um, the reason for that is that it works very well for basic prints. It has a lot of functions built into it. it does handles black and white as well. Uh, canvas, wraps and all things like that. So it's a good bit of software and it's similar on a PC and on a Mac. This is running on an oldish uh, Mac laptop and it runs absolutely fine. Let's just switch over to it. Now, I've opened it up from Photoshop. You can use it with uh, Lightroom as well if you want to use Lightroom. I've set on this, I've made sure I've selected the right printer, I've selected the paper type and it's set here as Pro Luster. I've set the size, I've set the print quality to highest. And also in terms of printer profiles, I've selected the printer profile that I made when I did the original testing for this paper on this printer. So this is a custom profile. Now, I haven't got quite so many profiles for the Pro 300 as I did for some of the later, more recent printers I've reviewed. But if you find one of the uh, profiles on there that's of use to you, let me know because they're free for non-commercial use. Uh, just drop me a line and say which one you want. Remember, they are specific to the paper type, so they're not general purpose profiles. Um, if you want the best results when you get paper, check that the people who supply the paper produce profiles for it, because without profiles, you're losing potentially quite a bit in image quality. Uh, you should ideally use a proper profile for it. But anyway, that's all set up there. I've, I've spaced it, I've used the software here to space it just to put a, a nice layout on the piece of paper here to give it a bit of a border. If I was matting this, I would probably reduce the size of that border so that I could get a larger image on the same sheet of paper. But this is just a, a standalone print that I'm doing on this here. It's all set up. There's nothing you need to do here. Now, I don't need to worry about the print resolution because I know it's a big file that will comfortably print at A2. So I've produced this image. It's been sharpened for print. 
I'm just letting the software resize it to whatever it wants, knowing that all that excess resolution that's there will make a difference because the testing I did on you know, won't make much of a difference. And I'm going to say you'll be hard put to actually see it, but you don't need to resize specifically to a paper here. It means that if I were to adjust this, make it a little bit bigger on the printer, I wouldn't need to worry about the print resolution. Now, a lot of people say, oh, but you should use special print resolutions. Well, maybe 15, 20 years ago with the, with the printers and drivers we had then. Not now. Now it makes no real difference. So I'm just going to go to print on this. Now it shows the uh, print settings I'm going to use. Just a quick check. I can double check at this point that I've got the right paper. I've got the right profile and everything. Yeah, it's fine. And it's off. And it's now going to send the information to the printer. Now, this is connected wirelessly. One slight problem um, I have discovered with the Canon Professional Print Layout software is that you have to connect to the printer to get the printer information before you can print. That's fine if your printer doesn't move. Now, I've been using this printer up in my office. That's on a different wireless network to what I've got here, where I am, where I'm shooting this. That means this has been assigned a different IP address. What does all this mean? It means when I go to the printer list at the top here, if I haven't used it downstairs, it's not in the list. It's still got the assignment it had from upstairs. So I have to go, when I first set this up down here, I have to go and change that. Um, it's a bit of a nuisance because it assumes you know a bit about networking. But if you find that when you um, move a printer like this, suddenly it doesn't appear in any of the software or anything that you've got, and this is the, the Canon software here, um, then perhaps make a new connection and it should be okay. Anyway, we have some action here and it looks like it's going to draw the paper in and print. Now, if you had paper in a box for a while, and this was one of the last sheets in this particular box, do check when you load that you haven't got any curled edges or corners. Because if there's one thing ruins a print is having a black smudge in the corner where the print head has hit it. Um, it's not a problem with this paper because it's good quality paper. It doesn't have any sort of curves on it. It's relatively flat. But sometimes you'll get paper which may have a slight bit of curl in it, a bit of raised corners or something like that. If you do, check that it's properly flat and straight when you load it. Um, it's easy to get just like a black smudge on the corner where the uh, print head has gone across and has just clipped the paper like that. And depending on what you're using the print for, then it can ruin the entire print. Um, obviously, if you're, if you're um, mounting it and putting it behind a matting board, then it doesn't really matter if there's a slight smudge there. You don't really want to do that sort of thing because it does cause problems eventually when, you know, with the print heads. But if you're showing a print as a bare print, then you do need to have a look at that. I can see the blue of the sky is spot on. It hasn't drifted into a slight magenta-ish tinge, which you can sometimes get. Um, it's one of the reasons also for taking a slightly warmer paper uh, is that if you have a paper that is very bright white, then sometimes light on it, it can fluoresce slightly and some of that can be in the, in the purple blue and it can just make your colours drift a little bit more from purples to blues. Uh, depends on the lighting. Um, here, this is uh, LED lighting. It's not causing any problems. Um, I've got a really nice uh, tonality in the sky there. It matches what I know is there in the print, in the original image, I should say. And this is slowing down a little bit. Um, it's not terribly quick printing. I'm printing at the highest quality and I did say it was a very big image. Now, I'm not losing, if I'd have reduced the size of the image, it would have printed perhaps a little bit faster, but I'm not really bothered by that. If you're making a print like this, then um, the difference between one that comes out in five minutes and one that takes eight minutes doesn't really matter that much. 
if you're doing lots of prints, then yes, I can see it would matter, in which case, you know, reduce the data that you're going to be sending and perhaps use a printer on a, an Ethernet connection rather than over to wireless. Well, there we are. Eventually, we we'll get the print and it looks great. Um, it is, uh, the colour is what I wanted. The detail is nice and sharp. Um, I know it's a good image, so it's helped. Now, the warmth of the paper works well with this particular image. Now, a similar image you might choose to print on the bright white paper. Um, it's not a lot of difference in it, but it's, it's quite a hefty paper. So there we have um, a basic high quality photo print produced on the Pro 300. Um, and uh, if you've got any questions, please do ask. Uh, I've got all the details. Uh, there's, as I say, there's a detailed review. There are other videos looking at the Pro 300. And if you've got any specific questions that you think stuff you'd like to know about for the Pro 300, please do let me know since I'm always looking for ideas for short videos like this that cover topics that people are interested in. Uh, but uh, there's a print I'm very happy with. Uh, so thanks for watching. Please do subscribe to the channel if you find it useful and uh, thank you.